Hello friends, welcome back to my studio. Hope you're well. Today's vlog is all about the art supplies that I've been collecting. I said that I, in the last vlog, I was going shopping, which I did on the weekend. And I've also collected a few things here to show you that have been coming in the post. And I thought, you've seen some things. I thought I'd group them all together in the one vlog. So they're all, all together. Uh, we also went op shop shopping and I found this lovely little Possibly it had a lid, it has got a little rim, but this gorgeous, you know, I love magnolias. And yeah, I found this little container and it works really well to hold all of my brushes. I tend to keep my brushes in groups so I can easily grab them. So that's got all my flats in that were crowded in another jar. So. That was a great little find. I think you'll see the rest better with the camera turned around, so let's do that. This is the glass palette that I normally use. It's just an old glass chopping board that I've put some paint on the other side because it's clear. And because I'm working in acrylic and oils, even though you clean up, it's really easy to contaminate and you certainly can't have them mixing on the palette. So I went in search of another palette for my oil paint area and I found this stone board. It's a chopping board, but it's a type of stone. I don't know, and I'm sorry, I can't tell you the brand. It was just sitting on the shelf. It's super heavy, quite thick, and I've used it already to mix the oils with the cold wax medium, and it's worked really well. And as you can see, it's cleaned up really, really great. I did rub a little bit of cold wax medium into the surface to try and help seal the stone a little bit. And so far it's working really well. I don't know whether I'll have to repeat that. We'll see how we go. But this has been a great find. And as you can see, it's half a size bigger again. Whoops, sorry for that loud noise. So a much bigger surface, so really, really great to use. And then before I get paints out and get it all messy, I'll show you some of the other things. So I bought a, another speedball brayer. This one is three and five sixteenths, whatever that means to an Australian, I don't know. It is that big and it's rubber and it'll be really, really great because I've got these two sizes already. So it gives me good versions when I'm using the rollers. This is a speedball roller. I've had this for absolute years. And as long as you look after them, they last. It's a really good brand. So that was really great to get. And while I was flipping through social media I came across this and I might put it on a dark background so you can see it a bit better this stencil and I thought oh that's really really lovely I'll order one of those it was super cheap and of course when I went into the site they had a minimum order I couldn't just order a couple of stencils so I went skipping through to see what else I might like to get and I got a stack they actually sent me two, so I've already used one in the oil area and one in the acrylic area. Quite a few. And then these packs, I've used square stencils before and I really enjoy them. They're almost like a Mandela type of thing. I mean, you won't want to see all of them, but just to give you an idea, I've got absolute heaps and there's some really really lovely lovely patterns in there you'll see me oh, that one's particularly nice you'll see me use these as we go along and another pack which i presume is different designs They're a bit, they're a bit thin, but I think they'll, they're plastic. I think they'll hold up. No, 
that one's quite nice yeah okay so that's the stencils and then because I was trying to order enough to make up the order size I ordered some of these I've got a very old my trusty rusty scalpel I bought this way back when I was at uni in the 90s and it's just been amazing it has no brand or anything on it to show you but I've noticed as I'm using it the this turns so you can and it's a bit gunked up with paint that turns so you can get the scalpels in it's got a little hex pattern and unfortunately this as I'm using it this comes loose all the time and I saw this little kit so I thought I'd get it it's not going to be the quality I don't think but it came with a heap of blades yeah, so a flat, a couple of points, and then a really weird one. Um, yeah, same sort of principle. Yeah, I can tell the, the weight is different. But if they stay up, and having the guard is quite nice, but if they stay tight, then that's useful. And I don't know whether I'll use a tiny little ruler, but let's, let's see. And then the other thing, I've only got these three palette knives and again, because of cross contamination with the oil paint, I wanted some more. And I also really wanted this shape here. So I found this kit in this site. So I bought these. And again, the timber is really light. They're, they're pretty crappy. Um, but I'm really happy to have that that size blade. I wanted that, and I think that'll that'll work. The metal's pretty good. They're a similar size. Yeah, the metal's actually quite quite stiff and good on them, but the timber is very very light. So depends what you what you like. I guess this is actually you know I'm such a tactile person that this the timber on these feel much nicer. These just without having the weight to them yeah they're not they're not great but I didn't expect them to be so one day I might might upgrade those we'll see how we go and the other thing to make up the order I got the some more gold leaf so gold and I got some copper and what's really nice about these my gold leaf that I have that's the brand comes in this little booklet and I it's actually really hard to get the gold leaf off here as you can see this page I've torn the leaf and there you go there's a bit more torn as I'm talking to you so while it's very thin and really lovely quality gold leaf, this it's actually quite hard. I probably should cut those into leaves. But what's really lovely about these is that it's all individual and it seems to be held. Oh, there's picked up two there. And it seems to be held on there that I'd be able to go up to the yeah look at that I can go up to the painting surface and apply that on so that's I'm actually really happy with that that that'll be really great even though they're smaller the way they're held is going to be really great so the gold leaf heaps and heaps of stencils the palette knives scalpel set I got all of that for $30 Australian with free postage so not too bad so the other couple of things that I've shown you before is the catalyst tool and this bowl scraper by this company and what's really great about these is you can 
drag glazes and the cold wax medium and things like that. And if you've got very fluid paint, you can flick with that really well. And of course you can make lines and yeah, all sorts of squiggles and things. I've only used them a little bit. This is all rubber. This one has a metal insert that is just on the inside and it's silicon. And so it has soft edge with it and it's actually quite nice to use. These are designed, as I've said before, and I've showed this, they're designed to sit comfortably in the palm of your hand. They're wider on this end compared to here. And you can use them on this edge or this edge. Quite nice tools. Okay, paints, the exciting bit. Last week, I showed you about this, mixing up this French blue. And I noticed that the Matisse, because I, you know, I was moving away from the Jo Sonia paints, and I found this Mineral Blue by Matisse, and I use this structure paint all the time. Mineral Blue or Antique Blue. And it, I noticed it's very, very similar. It's a little bit darker, but it's very similar. So I got some. Let's have a look at a bit of a swatch. So here's how. Let's use a new scalpel. Let's zoom in. So there's our Joe Sonia. There's the colour I mixed up. And here's our Matisse. So they're, oops, can you see those? Slightly different shades, but to have a tub ready to go rather than mixing paint, I'm going to really enjoy that. I think that'll work really well in your landscapes that I have planned. The other colours I got is this Australian Blue Gum. Matisse make a full range of Australian inspired colours and they are absolutely gorgeous. And I've had this colour before and love it. As you can see, it's the lovely muted blue. And here is another one of their Australian colours is the red violet. And again, it's muted and it's lovely and rich, earthy, but magenta, um, burgundy and thin colors actually really nice as a, as a glaze. And just out of interest, the other Australian colors I have part of the set is this salmon gum and the sienna. The salmon gum is gorgeous. Whoops, picked up a bit of that color in it, but yeah, you get a sense. And this, you can see, is a very transparent color. Earthy. Very transparent, really lovely. I also have this Australian Sky Blue, which is a lovely pastel blue shade. A bit, um, bit of red in there, a bit, bit tending towards the purple with that one. And then I picked up some of this Nickel Azo Gold, which has been on my wish list for some time. It's a golden colour from what I can tell. And it's earthy, but it's got, as hopefully the camera is showing, it's got the lovely gold undertone. 
and if you mix that with some Payne's Grey, mix that with a bit of this Payne's Grey, you get this really lovely antique sort of a colour which I'm going to play around doing glazes with this colour. I'm really playing around with glazes at the moment. And then the last colour, the last colour I got is some Venetian red. I think in the golden brand, this is called Mars Red. It's a clay-based paint, as in the colour pigment comes from clay. And as the name suggests, it's got that antique Venetian colour to it like you would use under gold leaf traditionally. Really, really lovely, rich, earthy colour. And this, mixed with some titanium white... ...gives... A really beautiful pinky hue of course depending on how much you add or don't add change the tone of that but that is why I've bought the Venetian red is to mix up this really beautiful pinky color in the golden brand there is a color that you can buy ready mixed like this and it is called titan mars pink but i couldn't get any so i'm going to have to mix mix that up when i want it i think that in amongst a landscape are going to go really really well in this yeah so good fun good times <laughs> And the last thing I bought in the paints is this golden glazing liquid. As I said, I have been using, playing with a lot of glazes and I've been using water like this, a little bit here. It's very thin. I mean, it doesn't drip off the brush, but it's much thinner than matte medium, which is what I have been mixing. And you can mix that in to get, does change the color slightly, but this has gone, the, the way the brush is dragging through that is it's so silky. It's actually a really lovely color too. So I'll be playing around experimenting with that. I haven't used it before. Apparently you can put a bit on your painting surface and spread it out and then add your paint over the top and you get that really lovely silky feel so the paint will glaze over the top or you can actually mix it into a a glaze that's really lovely i'm going to have fun with that and the reason why if i show you on a piece of paper let me get this out of the way The reason why you would use a medium for glazing and not just straight water is if you think about the, I'll use a colour. Oh, I've got these new Posca colours as well. Ages ago, I haven't even opened them. Spoiled. So if you think of a blob of paint and you have your pigment, suspended in there and then in between all of this is all your binder if you add water to this your binder ends up over like this and your pigment ends up like this and over time because the particles of pigment don't have a lot of binder with them the pigment can lift off the surface 
So if you add something like a glazing liquid, the glazing liquid will come in and link all of these, keeping your paint thin, but keeping it bound. Another way to get around this without using a, a glazing is to make sure over your painting you are adding a varnish, a polymer varnish over the top. That will cover over and help bind it together. But yeah, that's why you would use a medium. You can add a lot more water than anyone tells you or makes you think you can, but you do need to be adding binder back in over your mix to help hold it to the surface. Now, if you don't, this will crack and some people have seen really beautiful artwork where the paint has all crackled. I know you can get medium to make the paint crackle, but this can be a way to make the paint crackle on the surface, which, you know, can be, be lovely, but you're still going to need something over the top again. Otherwise it will completely crackle eventually and you'll have no paint on your surface. So putting some sort of binder over the top, there's a gloss varnish. Or you can get something like this, a binder medium. It doesn't have to be gloss. It can be high gloss, matte. So just some sort of uh, binder, acrylic polymer over the top of that will help hold it. Let's have a look at the colours of these things. I've just found them. So if anyone doesn't know Posca pens, most paint pens will do this. I'm pushing in the, the tip. I can try and show you and the paint flows then into the tip and then away you go mm. it's a little bit more green it's looking a bit more turquoise on the viewfind in the camera and then this one which because I just love the salmon so much I was hoping this would be close to this colour. Lovely. So that colour is coral pink and this one is emerald green. And lastly, I got some linen. Let's zoom out so you can see. It's got um, a backing gesso on it it's just an off cut it's a 12 ounce linen I've painted on linen before and it was really really lovely depending on the ounce that you get it will have a different texture to canvas I think the weave is a little bit closer woven you can see there the gesso edge so you wouldn't you could paint on this surface but i'll be interested to paint play around with painting on the linen side and perhaps leaving some linen showing don't know just an idea i had it was just a little piece so it was only 30 dollars for a metre 39 by 54 centimetres. So I'd get a couple of pieces out of that as a good size canvas. So yeah, I'll be playing around with that. The last thing I'll show you, I've got all my tubes of paint here with all their swatches on. But when I have the tubs of paint, I have them sitting here like this. As you can see, I couldn't see a lot of this paint stacked like that so as you can see I put a little bit of color on top of the lid and that really helps me identify what colors I've got and when I've got the darker colors here I put a little bit of titanium white on the lid and then my dark color over the top so that's what I've just done now and there's my mineral blue in the set so there you go that's what I have been collecting just over the weekend and also as you saw a few pieces I've been keeping aside to put it all together in one vlog for you. Was there anything there that you've added to your wish list? 
or anything that's inspired you to get painting i do hope so if you haven't already subscribed please consider doing that give me a thumbs up if you've liked this and i will be back next week have a lovely week bye